Our gospel passage begins, Whoever receives you receives me. Whoever receives me receives him who sent me. How do you get the blessings of God the Father? What do you need to do to be blessed by God to earn an eternal reward? You do so by receiving Jesus his Son. Now this creates the question, how do you receive Jesus his Son? The answer, by receiving his messenger, and thereby his message, by believing the gospel, the good news. Paul writes in his epistle to the Romans, How then will they call on him whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? When you receive the messenger and believe the message, you receive the Son. Jesus. When you receive Jesus, you receive God the Father and Creator. When you receive God the Father and Creator, you receive His reward, eternal life. An everlasting life where there is no pain, no suffering, there are no tears, there is no death, there is no decay. If you receive the message, the gospel, the good news. The news that God provides us a way out. That although God cannot tolerate sin, He also knows that we cannot get out of sin by ourselves. That in order to overcome the sin in our lives, God must intervene on our behalf. That God does in fact intervene on our behalf and provides the required sacrifice, the Lamb that takes away our sin. In our reading from Genesis, this fact, this demonstration of God's grace is prefigured in the story of Abraham being willing to sacrifice, of, sacrifice Isaac. We get a preview of what God will do for us through Jesus, his son. A sacrifice must be made. Sin must be covered. The perfect father offers his perfect son. In the story from Genesis, Abraham briefly represents God. And Isaac briefly represents Jesus. But ultimately, the story reveals that it is not our sacrifice, but God that will provide what we need. God will provide his own lamb. The lamb we will learn later, his son, Jesus. This fact becomes part of our worship. Just as we prayed just a few minutes ago, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. That is good news. We do not have to make up for our own sin. God does it for us. And that's where we can get in a bit of trouble. Once we realize that grace abounds, that whatever it is that we do can be and will be if we ask, covered by Jesus, many people then go on to think that they can do whatever they please. God has it covered. I have a free pass to do whatever I want. And it almost makes sense. God's covered all my debt, all my sin. His grace is greater than anything that I can do. No sin is too bad that He'll refuse to forgive if and when I ask. Therefore, I can do as I wish. The debt's been paid in full. This is how the church in Rome was acting when Paul wrote to them. And when he wrote to them with these words, What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. If we have indeed called upon the Lord to provide us His forgiveness then we ought to act like it. We are to be what we are becoming. Paul writes, do not let sin rule your body. He writes in the present tense, do not let sin rule your body. It's a struggle. It is happening now. Temptation exists each and every day. But do not let sin rule in your body. You are not under the law. You are under grace. Sin will have no rule over you. The future is coming. The day will come in which 
you will be completely free from sin. By the grace of God, you will be eternally separated from sin and sin eternally separated from you. Look to the future and then now, today, be what you are becoming. Do not let sin rule in your body. Now sin used to rule in your body, he tells them. But what did that get you? That sin that's fun for the moment, he goes on, he concedes that it can be quite tempting. And they even were in the point of looking back at it, kind of reminiscing, looking back and enjoying their memories of the bad old days. It can be fun for the moment, but in the end, it leads to death. What did it get you? It can be tempting. There seems to be no consequences. You know, today we're bombarded with the exact same message. What's the Vegas commercial? It's okay, you can say it out loud. What's the Vegas commercial? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Is it true? No. It's not true. One of the things that if you watch enough cable TV, especially the entertainment channels, one of the things that you'll see is superstars after they have fallen. It's amazing how many stars go from the top, not all, but a very large number. They go from the top to jail. Seeing their mug shots is quite telling. Seeing them all strung out. Hair all looking like they're a bum in the street, haven't bathed in days because they're on whatever drugs they're on. For some reason, Hollywood's beautiful people don't look so beautiful in a mugshot. The do whatever you want lifestyle, which in reality is the slave to sin lifestyle, has provided America with a teenage STD rate of over 25%. Not even out of high school yet. 25%. Lives that are permanently changed or even brought to an early end by the lie that we can do whatever we, want, whatever we want and there will be no consequences. But there is good news. And the gospel, the good news, is this. God will forgive you of absolutely anything and everything you have done. But once that happens... You really ought to act like it. We either serve God or we serve sin. As Paul wrote to those Romans, he says, You are the slave of the one whom you obey. You have a choice. Either sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. Be a Christian. That is your task. Be a Christian. Serve God through His Son, the Lamb of God, that takes away all of our sin. Do not let sin rule your body. Instead, be what you are becoming, sin-free. Present yourselves to God as one who has been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. Amen.